Aloha. How are we doing, Salon? Doing great, Pat. Um, it's been a great week. You know, Villa Group is heating up, I would say. Yeah, um, things are uh, sh- things are on the move. We got got listings, we got deals, things are happening. But before we dive in, just wanted to welcome everyone to the um you know, I actually forgot what episode we're on, but I think number three, number four, right in there, number three. Okay. Third episode. The third. May, May 23rd, 2023, for the record. And uh Palhana Podcast, episode three. Let's dive in. So what do we got here, bud? Um, well, do you want to do do you want to do Pat's picks or do you want to talk about uh the hot topic of the day? Um, you know. I think this topic is is quite pressing, so let's dive right into that. Um, Sloan and I were uh, we were chatting. What was that last week? We'll call it last week, and um, we've been seeing an emerging trend in the market. Um, what do we want to call it? It's basically scammers, scammers, scammers. <laughs> yep, scammers out there. Um. But it's it's evolved to a point where it's it's fooling people and it's uh, it's effective. Um, we both have a story that is recent from one of these scammers that we're gonna we're gonna kind of run through and let everyone know about. Um, but definitely something to keep an eye on for people who are either you know looking to sell your property or looking to buy property. Um, and, uh, yeah, just something to be aware of out there. So when you want to, uh, well, let's start in chronological order. My, my instance happened before yours. So we'll, we'll, yeah. I'll, I'll kick it off. And then you, yours and yours is a little, a little more heavier involved. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah Cause yeah. it involves actual like MLS listing. Yeah. Multiple people got fooled on that <laughs> one. Um, so yeah, I'll dive into mine. So a few weeks ago, um, a client called me and was excited. They've had their eye out. They're looking for a, a lot to build on, a lot to build on in Wailea. And uh, for most of you that know, you know, land to build on in Wailea is is relatively scarce these days. Not a lot out there, um, especially listed on the market. And this one happened to be a for sale by owner. So as we all know, you know, for sale by owners, there's always a little bit of uh, skepticism to be had there. Um, you want to, you know, definitely make sure everything's on the up and up. But, um, you know, it all seemed, seemed straightforward. My client actually had spoken that, you know, they called this seller or seller, as they say, um, not the actual seller, but someone posing as the seller and um, called them up. Asked him about the property, talked about it. Um, you know, the the first red flag I would say is that the pre- property was priced extremely well. Um, you know, below market, but the seller had a great story about why. You know, they uh, had some health issues in the family, and you know they were planning to build on it, but aren't now, and they just need to they need to unload it, get it sold and, and, you know, focus on other things. Um, the story, you know, panned out in my, my client's eyes. Um, you know, when my client called me about this property, um, you know, I immediately, you know, had, had those hairs, you know, those hairs on your, arm. they, they <laughs> stuck up a little bit on the back of the neck. I don't know which hairs they were, but we had some hairs that were you know, the spidey senses were tingling a little, <laughs> but, you know, my client was sure he spoke with him directly, sounded great. Um, So we went ahead and wrote an offer, wrote an offer on it, Um, submitted that offer to the seller and got it signed, signed deal. Boom. <laughs> got a deal. Got yeah, a deal. Got a deal. Okay. So signed offer. Um, We opened up escrow. And uh, believe it or not, yeah, opened escrow with this seller. And, um, you know, the ball was moving, right? So we, um, and we're very close with our friends over at Ho'okele Title and Escrow. Shout, Shout out, out Agnes. Neighbor. Yeah. Yeah. Does great things for us. And, you know, her and I had an initial discussion right out of the gate that, you know, hey, this, you know, for sale by owner, it's off market. It seems just a little odd. So let's. 
let's make sure we're we're doing our due diligence here on this one and and make sure these every, everything pan you know is on the up and up so we're in escrow buyer uh they wire their deposit in you know my client deposits in escrow moving forward everything's good um and I start trying to reach the seller. So I, I, you know, I want to talk to the seller. We want to discuss some terms, um, you know, details about the property, this or that. Seller was very hard to reach. They would text me back, but they would not answer a phone call. And in addition, we had only been speaking with one seller, but there was a husband and wife on title. So yeah, yep, two people. So I kept saying, hey, we need to speak, um, you know, with your wife. Um, you know, she's going to have to sign closing docs as well, just as you, um, and, you know, it took us a few days actually, but we finally got a contact for, for the wife. Um, and when we finally got a hold of the wife, the, the conversation was very odd. Um, very, um, and we did some research, right? We had, we had Googled this seller, um, very well educated, was in the medical field, um, seemed to be a very, you know, a successful professional. And the conversation or the interaction I had was was not that way. Um, <laughs> very rude, very um, straight to the point saying, hey, you know, just send me the docs. We'll sign them. I don't have time. Got to go. Um, so it was it that was, you know, that was a red flag right there that that increased um, those spidey senses. They're like, well, this this doesn't seem to be um, going how it should be. So we had a thought. Um, I called up Agnes over at escrow and said, hey, you know, this is in Wailea. Um, WCA, as many of you probably know, WCA is a community or association in Wailea. Um, and there's a management company and, um, you know, they've got a directory of all the owners and we... So, so we reached out to WCA and we said, hey, you know, here's the property we're in contract on. Is there anything you can tell us or can you put us in contact with the seller? They're like, okay, let us look into it. They call me back about 20 minutes later. It wasn't long. And they're like, oh, we know, you know, we know about this property. We've been dealing with these sellers for quite a while. They're actually scheduled to break ground on the lot in the next couple months. No way. And we're like... <laughs> Okay. Uh that doesn't it's like red, the story we begin. It's like red that's like red flag number five. Yeah, yeah. So major red flag here. Yeah. Yeah. So from there, what I said is that and they don't want to give out um, you know, the owner's contact him, yeah, all that. Understandable. So yeah. I said, Hey, can you reach out to them and have them call me if you know if they want to know what's going on? And obviously they did. So I got a call literally within about a half hour from the actual seller. And uh they were definitely not selling their property. Um, they were actually notified by another broker in the market that it was showing as listed, but they couldn't do anything with Zillow. They had tried to reach out to Zillow, say, hey, we're the owners. The fraudster had actually claimed their listing on Zillow, so they could not make any edits, which wow. is just wild that that can even yeah. happen. Yeah. They couldn't make any edits. Zillow wouldn't do a thing about it, so their property's listed. They knew it. And once I dove into the story and told them how far along we had gotten, they were just blown away um, that it had, you know, that we were able to open escrow on their property without them even being a part of it. Um, so needless to say, we got that sorted out. We uh, canceled escrow. Um, we passed along the contact information we had received to the authorities. Our local authorities wouldn't do anything. So the actual owners of the property, they took it a step further. They actually gave that contact information to the federal authorities in hopes of getting, you know, something happening, right? And, and yeah, we don't anything. know where that was left off. But um, yeah, clients were, were, you know, not exactly ecstatic after that whole um, engagement. They were obviously bummed because they thought they had found a great property to build on. And um, yeah, here we are. So thankful, you know, obviously we had a good team, um, good people in place that were, you know, definitely digging deep. Um, in speaking with Agnes um, at Ho'okele, she had actually said she has heard of 
properties closing in the in the past this way, which is just wild. Um, can you believe that? I mean, well, I, 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 I guess it. I guess if if there's no, I guess the notary has to you know to sign final documents and stuff like that. There has to be some sort of ID check or something, right? Like what's... Well, yeah. So that's what they do, right? So a typical notary is going to check your identification, have you signed, but... So but obviously they're going to... Fake, you know... Forge the notary. Fake ID. Yeah. Yeah. Fake ID, yeah. fool the notary. Um, wow. And that was another... It actually brings up a good point. That was another red flag. So we kept explaining to the sellers that we were talking with that um, we were going to arrange for a mobile notary to come to them. It was going to be our notary coming to them to sign. They kept pushing back and saying, no, we'll have our own notary do it. Just send us the docs. We'll have them notarized and get them back to you. That was obviously another red flag that, that came up. Um, so they were definitely trying to, um, you know, pull the wool over our eyes and uh yeah good thing we dove into it and got it taken care of before it got too far but um we're hearing more and more occurrences of this happening um not only in our market but but all over the country um yeah so that's my story sloan what do you got dive into yours yeah so mine um is with with some current clients of mine that that are in escrow on a sale you know that they're selling their their property um right now and they're looking for somewhere to go and so, you know, we're obviously checking every single day for, for stuff for them. And, um, we see a lot come up similar to yours, it, it, but this one actually came up on the MLS as listed. And so, um, very prominent West Maui agent, um, had the listing and my clients, they drove by, they went and looked at it and no major red flags from the beginning, other than the price listed, you know, kind of like yours, a pretty good bit below market value, but you never know, you know, someone's just trying to get rid of it or yeah, there's no, there was no water to the property. And so, you know, getting a water meter was going to take some time and, um, not, you know, a super premier lot in, in the neighborhood up there in Wailuku Heights, but, you know, still offered nice views, um, ocean views and mountain views. And so, um, my clients loved it, um, obviously. And, um, so we submitted an offer. We were actually the second offer. Um, and, you know, they, they asked that they wanted us to submit financial information, you know, bank account balances and all this stuff. And so we get all that submitted and the listing agent calls me, uh, the next day and is like, Hey, you guys are the highest offer. Um, but we're having a little trouble getting hold of the seller right now. And so, you know, that that's normal. Sometimes the, the sellers are actually, you know, on the, the tax record there, they live in Taiwan. And so, um, Taiwanese family owns a lot. And so obviously there's a big time difference here in, in Maui. And so no big deal. So she calls me later that night and is like, Hey, we talked to the seller. Um, and something's a bit strange, you know, that the sellers, um, the actual owners of the property are from Taiwan, but this guy that I'm talking to has a pretty thick, um, African accent. And so that was kind of when I was like this, this is pretty fishy Red and flag. um, yeah, like major. And she's like, yeah, it's, it, it doesn't really add up. We're still looking into it. And I'm like, well, don't, you know, don't submit any of my clients financial information to this guy, please. And um, she's like, yeah, no problem. We haven't, we haven't really sent anything to them. And um, so I was just like, okay, I'll just, I'll kind of just wait for your call back. And uh, he calls me the next day and tells me that it seems to be a scam. And um and yeah, they're going to terminate the listing and, and all this stuff. And um, it's just, it's amazing to me that it, it can get that far, you know, like how as an agent, right. We are supposed to do our own due diligence with our clients. And the fact that this thing made it all the way to the market is, is pretty scary. I mean, this, this agents, he's a good agent and um, you know, for something like this to happen, it's, I don't know. It's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's wild. Um, and didn't you even say, I mean, there is the, when this came on the market, there was so much interest. People were lining up at the lot, checking it out. So we're talking yes. 20, 30 different buyers all getting excited, thinking they're going to get the best deal in Wailuku Heights. 
in a while. And it's this thing just, was it, it was hot, man. Yeah. Like yeah. like you said, like my clients, they went up there. There was like it looked like five other cars just there waiting to go and see it. Yeah. And there was people walking and just agents and and buyers and other people from the neighborhood, everything, everybody was just buzzing about this property. And Unreal. it turned out, it turned out to be a scammer. Jeez. Jeez, jeez, jeez. It's, it's crazy that it, it can get to the point of getting an accepted offer. Yeah. And like what Agnes said, actually getting it across the finish line and closing and getting paid. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's wild. Just fraud, you know? Yeah. No, that's crazy. Um, yeah. And I can't even imagine you close, right? And then what happens? So we've, they transfer funds to this fake seller. Exactly. The deed is recorded in the Bureau yep. of Conveyances. The current, well, what happens to the, the actual owner? Like, do they know, lose like, control the property and then you got to sue to get it back? It's like, it. what a mess, right? So- Definitely something everyone needs to be aware of. Um, keep an eye out. That's why, you, you know, you got to work with a good representative that, um, you know, is doing the digging, doing the due diligence, representing your interest, all that good stuff. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Wild times. We're seeing more of this stuff every day, though. That's for sure. Well, the, the FISBO stuff on Zillow, it's obviously easier to do because especially with vacant land, right? You can just. Yeah. And it happened. It's it's been happening with rental properties on Maui since oh, I've yeah. lived here. Yeah, yeah, you know, the and, and market. It, yeah, all right. the time. You you call these people and they immediately don't vet you at all. They just ask for a thousand dollars up front to get you to lock in the property or whatever amount. Yeah. yeah. And they're just scamming you for that quick little buck. And yeah. you know, obviously, you know, getting into the scamming of lots and fraud and stuff's a bigger game but i mean on a on a smaller scale it's I, it, we see it all the time in our rental market here so it's you know yeah, yeah uh, and it always it's oftentimes one of our listings right so when you list a property it seems that they take that listing yep. pull the photos put it in an ad for rent and then they try to get a rental deposit from someone so yeah that's been happening for a while they're obviously getting a little more uh a little more greedy um, and yeah, it's, uh, interesting, interesting stuff. Um, what should we dive into now? So that's, you know, we definitely, uh, that's the highlight of the show today. Oh, you know what we got to do, Sloan? Let's bring up Pat's picks, Pat's picks, Let's bring up Pat's picks. <laughs> um, we've got. A beautiful new listing from the team, courtesy of Sloan Allison, listing agent. Run into this one. Great investor buy. Yeah, 2086 Helena. It's in um it's in Wailuku Town. Um lovely area, really, really convenient to to all of Central Maui. Um, but this one itself is is potential three unit um investor special. You got a, a garage apartment that you kind of see right there. Um it's around a little over 400 square feet. It's got a nice tiled bathroom. Um, and then the main house is three bedroom, one bath. Um, great courtyard there. I, I love that little zone right there. Um, it's really the highlight of the house for me. Clean house. Great. I mean, and, and where do you find three units? I know under a million bucks. It's we all you know, know, in you know, yeah. We all know a lot of people are looking for that multi-unit opportunity. Um, yes. Some of these may be non-conforming. Disclaimer out there, right, Sloan? Yep, yep. Buyers and buyer's agent must do their own due diligence. Yep, yep. But um, but hey, three living spaces on Maui. It's it's obviously very common. We see this sort of stuff. Um, so this is this is the converted garage, correct? <laughs> yeah, there's there's some nice uh, nice energy in in, in that. Um... <laughs> that studio there for sure great studio laundry over the back oh kuleana water that's i've actually never seen that on a property go back yep. go back a couple yeah it's um hold on here hold on we gotta do a little gotta shift over and cool nice water. right there oh, yeah, yeah so that that the, the trough running through it's yeah it's water actually from the valley that runs down and cool. um just a little bit of running water that you can help, you know, irrigate your property with. And, um, it's free. Yeah. 
Love that. Yeah. Love that. Um, so yeah, great, great three unit in the heart of Wailuku for under a million. We already got showings lined up, right? Yep. I am. Let's see uh, what else is exciting out there today. You know what? We got to mention this. This is a new listing uh, courtesy of Kathy Worley. Love her doing a deal with her right now over in my lady Kolu, a veteran of the industry. Hokai, Hokai Place, right in South Kihei, right on the border of Wailea, single level home, custom home, walking distance to the beach, great opportunity for under uh, two, three, two, three, um, lovely low maintenance exterior, you know, this is yeah. a popular second home neighborhood, Um Looks like solid construction. We're actually supposed to get inside it this week. No interior photos right yeah. now, but um, we should have some coming online here soon. Um, but yeah. Kathy Kathy doesn't need interior photos, to be no. honest. You no. don't need them. She no. doesn't need them. No, it'll uh, it'll probably sell without those. Uh, but yeah, yeah, this was, um, you know, we were just doing our PSA today for you guys. Um, let me just get rid of that. There we go. Yeah. We, we want to let everyone know about that fraud going on. Keep an eye out for that. Everything else, who knows? Uh, Congress at a stalemate. Sounds like they're making progress. We might have a budget. We might not. Who knows what's going to happen? I don't know. Um, rates are going up. They're going down. They're all yeah. up. Um, they are trickling up though. They're, they're trending up slowly right now. So keep an eye on that. Um, and inventory stand tight values are solid. That's, uh, that's kind of where we're at moral of the story, but, um, any, uh, final closing notes for our listeners out there, Sloan? I don't think so. Um, I kind of wanted to talk about Brooks Kepka and, and live in the PGA tour, but maybe, maybe we'll save that for another, another day. It, yeah, uh, shout out to Brooks when in the yeah, PGA. He, big, great weekend. Uh, big ups for live right there. Big up. Michael Block, Michael Block too. He was big story, the uh, PGA professional that got finished tied for fifteenth, qualified for next year's PGA, yeah, as well as got uh, got an exemption into the tournament this week. Charles Schwab and uh, Pretty... and a cherry on top got an ace. Ace, that was sick. Ace. That was that was it. That was pretty sweet. Um, hopefully, he was partying with Brooks on his two day bed uh, after the win. Brooks Brooks was Liddy down in south florida at the panthers game it looked like he hadn't looked like he hadn't slept in two days yeah yeah he was celebrating that win um so yeah interesting stuff and um yeah we'll catch you guys next time Falhana podcast aloha <laughs>